Alright there, Internet. I have a question for you lot. Are you prepared for nuclear Armageddon? No? Didn't think so. But while you're sitting comfortably at home with a cup of tea watching Carnation Street, the world is on the brink of disaster. All you have to do is take a look at the news headlines and the media and the internet, and it's pretty clear that the world is going to hell in an handbasket. Right now, as I speak, across the globe, there are nuclear ICBMs in underground silos and in submarines patrolling the oceans, and all it takes is for Kim Dong Watts' his name, or one of those other bastards at the top, to have a tantrum, and the whole world goes up in flames. Well, I'm not going to sit by and wait for that to happen. I want to make sure I'm prepared, and you should too. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you lot how I'm preparing for the impending nuclear Armageddon. Now I'm sitting here talking to you in my very own custom-made nuclear bunker. Now I know what you're thinking. What's that in the background? What's your bunker made out of? Wood? Yeah, it is. It is an overgrown wooden nuclear bunker, aka a shed. Now I know, I know. A shed? How's a shed going to protect you in a nuclear apocalypse? Well hear me out. If you do your research and watch those old Cold War era public information videos on how to survive nuclear war, you'll notice one consistent piece of advice. In the event of a nuclear blast, take cover under a desk or table. So if a wooden desk or table can protect you from a nuclear explosion, then surely a strong sturdy wooden shed can and all. So as you can see, it's a nice strong sturdy shed that'll definitely withstand a nuclear blast. And besides, it's not like it's going to receive a direct hit or anything, because they've got far bigger fish to fry. I mean, the nuke's probably going to land on Parliament or something, not some bloke shed in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I know that the windows are currently a health and safety hazard, so I'll probably need to board those up. Or, saying that, I reckon if I put double glazing in there, that should reinforce them and make them nuke-proof. And then the net curtain should uh, uh, block out most of the... Uh, bright nuclear flash so it won't get blinded, or of any luck, the nuclear explosion will happen behind it. So either way, I'm going to be safe. It's, it's out of the way. It's, it's a sound investment, I think. A proper solid uh, overground wooden nuclear bunker. So now I've just proved why a wooden shed is the perfect nuclear bunker, that brings us to our next question. What about radioactive fallout? Surely the radiation can seep through the cracks in the wood. Well. I've got a solution for that. Gaffer tape. Everyone knows that gaffer tape is radioactive proof. That's common sense, that is. So if I cover up every crack in the shed that radiation can leak through, I can make the shed radiation proof. However, if I'm going to make every nook and cranny of this shed airtight with gaffer tape to make it radiation proof, surely that also makes it oxygen proof and eventually I'll run out of air, right? Well, I got just a solution for that. What breathes in carbon dioxide and breathes out oxygen? This little bad boy here. I present to you the solution to my oxygen problem. This little beauty here will keep me breathing throughout a nuclear winter. And this will produce all the oxygen that I could ever possibly need. Now I know what you're thinking. I know, I know. How am I going to keep the tree alive inside a shed during a nuclear winter? Doesn't it need sunlight? Well, I got a solution for that. In case you haven't noticed, this shed is lit up like a Christmas tree. That's right, who needs sunlight when you got artificial light in? Now I know, I know, that leads me to yet another dilemma. How am I gonna keep the lights on in a post-apocalypse without electricity? Well, I thought of that and all. I read an article online somewhere about a bus that runs on, get this, poo. That's right, human faeces. So I'm thinking, if you can get a bus to run on human faeces, surely, with the right method, you can turn your poo into a source of electricity in a post-apocalyptic world. Now, of course, I haven't figured out the exact ins and outs yet of how I'm going to transfer my poo into a usable source of electric to keep the lights on, to keep the tree alive, to keep me alive. But, I have the concept, I know it's possible, all i got to do is figure out an exact method, uh, construct a mechanism, so I'll, I'll figure that out eventually, but I've got a working concept, so that's a start. Anyway, moving on. 
Right, so food storage. I've got a little cupboard here. Um, and inside, I've got all your classic, you know, prepper's best friend, really. The, the tin goods, you know, the non-perishables. So that will last me for quite some time. Uh, I've got everything I need, all my nutrients. So I've got I've got tin fruit for, for vitamins so I don't get scurvy. I've got tin vegetables. You've got your peas. Look, I've even got some carrots as well. That will give me a nice... Um, night vision boost uh, uh sweet corn i got i got my protein too got tin chicken i got uh my fancy a curry i got curry got me tin fish me salmon tuna got some uh sardines i've got some spam here and all got a bit of spam there i even got some bully beef there so pretty much all of my dietary needs are, are covered and you know i'm not a fat bastard i don't eat that much so this will last me quite a while and there's still more that i can get before the apocalypse so i'll definitely keep this stocked up uh as you can see i've conveniently and very cleverly located my food cupboard right next to my bedding now the reason i've done this is in case i get hungry in the middle of the night or even better if in the morning I want breakfast in bed, all I got to do is reach over to the cupboard and there we go, I can have breakfast in bed. I mean, just because civilization has collapsed don't mean I can't enjoy classic breakfast in bed. Uh, up here I've got a bunch of magazines because, uh, you know, it'll get boring in the apocalypse, so I need to keep myself entertained. I've got a couple of footy magazines among that lot too. I mean, just because my favourite team dies in nuclear fire doesn't mean I can't reminisce on the good times. Green Army! Now I am aware that despite all my amazing preparations so far, if I don't have a supply of clean water, I'm finished within a couple of days. Well. I have taken advantage of modern civilization while I still can and I have a huge stack of these bad boys stacked up in a corner over there it will last me months and months right so got plenty of that now I know eventually that will run out so what am I going to do when my plentiful supply of bottled water runs out the answer urine I mean, Bear Grylls drank his own urine on TV, so surely I can do the same. I mean, it tastes like my favourite own brewed cider anyway, so happy days. Sorted. Right, moving on to the next topic, defence. Because let's face it, those that do survive a nuclear apocalypse are going to be in a pretty desperate situation and will be more than willing to acquire supplies from you without asking nicely. Now, of course, in the interest of self-preservation, you need to do everything in your power to stop said individuals from acquiring your supplies. Now, for this purpose, I do have a shotgun. I won't show you on camera because I don't want to get demonetized, but I will show you two other weapons I have that are far more deadlier and effective than a shotgun and will definitely ensure that any threats to me are neutralized. Let me introduce you to two far deadlier weapons, my canine companions, Yoda, the Chocolate Labrador, and Russell, the English Springer Spaniel. Both of these are descended from the fierce grey wolf and are capable of tearing human flesh to shreds. Now take a look at these bad boys. These fangs are capable of tearing a raider's limbs off with that. Look at that. Look at those deadly vicious fangs there. Look. Look at these lot here. Look. You can rip a super mutant's bollocks off with those gnashers. I can imagine it now, like a raider in the wasteland sees, sees Yoda here and says, Oh look, it's chocolate Labrador, I think I'll have him for dinner. And Yoda's like, woof woof, no you won't, I'll have you for dinner, rawr. Or, true to his name, dinner for every you I will, rawr. So yeah, those are my two deadly vicious guard dogs, and they're as ready for the apocalypse as I am. Now eventually, when things die down, I will have to leave the safety of my nuclear bunker, and venture out to build a brave new world in the wasteland. Now, of course, radiation is still probably going to be an issue, so I'll wrap myself and my dugs up in radioactive proof gaffer tape, head out into the wasteland, and see if I can find a couple of friendly survivors, and hopefully we can band together and build ourselves a nice little settlement. And, uh, of course, if the settlement gets in trouble, I'm sure that there's going to be a lone wanderer or two out there who will be more than happy to help, so long as someone marks it on their map. Now, that brings us to our next topic. Economy. Now, in a post-apocalyptic society, 
This little piece of paper here, and these little bits of metal here, sorry to flash me cash, will be worth absolutely nothing. But, these little bits of metal here, will be worth everything. That's right, if the Fallout series is anything to go by, which everyone with a shred of common sense knows that the Fallout video game series is a totally accurate scientific representation of a post-nuclear world, the bottle cap is king. So you want to make sure that you save up as many of these little guys as you can so that you can secure your financial prosperity in a post-nuclear trading world. So I think that covers all the basics you need to know to survive nuclear Armageddon. I hope you aspiring preppers out there found this video useful. Let's ask the omnipotent 1950s American narrator what he thinks. What do you think, omnipotent 1950s American narrator? Well, following total atomic annihilation, I think you're prepared for the future. Thank you, omnipotent 1950s American narrator. Well, if that's not a seal of approval, I don't know what is. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the wasteland. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all around. Come on, dance for me. With a Geiger counter in my hand, I'm going to get me some government land. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Mwah. Remember to like and subscribe. Or, I'll shoot you, I mean, I'll poke you with this here M1 Garand pen! Yeah!